So let's start with asking ourselves a question. What is Grafana Locky? So Grafana Locky is basically a log aggregation tool that helps collect, store and search log data from various data sources. It can be either applications or servers. It works quite well with Prometheus because with Prometheus you can monitor metrics and then with Grafana Locky you can see the contextual detail using Grafana Locky. So typically in a production environment you will see people using both. They are going to use Prometheus for metrics and they are going to use Grafana Locky for logs aggregation and log squaring. Now the combination of this makes it quite easier to find and fix problem quickly in your system. Now the other question which can come to our mind is why log aggregation is even required? Now you might be wondering why log aggregation is even required. So let me try to help you find answer for this question. Now what you see on the screen is typical dashboards which is created with the combination of Prometheus and Grafana. So typically for system monitoring, you will be monitoring things like CPU load, whether the CPU is busy, how much is the system load, how much is the RAM usage percentage, how much is the swap usage percentage, how much is the file system is consumed, and there might be various other metrics which you might be interested in. Now just ask yourself a question, is it enough? For example, let's say here it shows us that CPU utilization is 80%, or let's say we see memory utilization in 90%, and it has been showing us that RAM utilization is above 90% for let's say last 10 minutes. Okay, so it is telling us about the problem, but it is not really telling us more detail about the problem. Now same thing goes for application monitoring. For example, let's say you are monitoring Nginx data and you are able to see how many requests your application is getting and you are able to see let's say real time visitors, you are able to see how many requests which is being successful and then you are able to see how many requests which is being redirected. Then you can see how many issues are going on or maybe you know gateway not found issues are going on or page not found issues are going on. For example, let's say people are facing gateway not found issue or let's say people are facing page not found issue but for which page exactly they are facing page not found issue or let's say you are monitoring the response time how quickly your service or application is responding now you might see that your application is responding slowly but you won't be able to know why your application is responding slowly you know if you don't really you have log aggregation so that's the reason we need log aggregation tool and a tool like grafana locky which is really easy to implement it offers quite a lot of benefits so let's just quickly summarize few pointers about grafana locky so now if you are looking for comprehensive monitoring starting from the key main tricks and then going down to the log level then of course you have to use then of course you have to use log aggregation tool now talking about contextual information of course as we discussed if you want to know the context of the issue or more information about reason behind any issue which is being shown here on the screen you will of course going to need some contextual information and log aggregation tool is the one which is going to help us getting those contextual information now log aggregation is quite useful when you are troubleshooting and debugging for example when you see cpu utilization is going high or maybe application is responding slowly, you quickly want to know what is the root cause behind it. And for that, you will have to have all the logs collected together, aggregated, and you should have ability to query those logs. Nowadays, if you see distributed application or number of microservices have increased a lot, that is the architecture which is being preferred. So that makes it even more important for all the logs to be collected and correlated. So until these logs are not correlated, it's going to be quite hard to find out the issues across all the services. Now we might also want to keep logs for compliance and audit purposes and you might want to manage all the logs centrally at some place that's the reason you might have to do some kind of log aggregation strategy. And one point which is not really mentioned here but which is key as well for example, nowadays all these logs are used for generative AI learning or generative AI strategies. So that makes it even more important for collecting all the logs and aggregating them and keeping it for longer period of time. So these are some of the reasons why we even need log aggregation system. So I hope you found the reason of using log aggregation system in your project. Now let's talk about some of the problems which are really addressed by Locky. So our first point is complexity of traditional log management. So traditionally the tools which were used were having a lot of challenges. For example, either they were quite difficult or quite complex to configure or either they required certain type of storage and they also required quite a lot of computing power to ingest the logs and query them. Now what Locky has done is Locky has simplified this process by providing lightweight components. So when we are talking about the architecture, I'm going to show you Locky is built of several components and all of those several components can be scaled independently. So now it's quite easy to install and manage, quite easy to configure and quite easy to start 
start ingesting data to Loki and it's even quite easier to start reading all the data from Loki. Now the other issue which we had was high storage cost. So if you are storing lots and lots of logs and you are indexing everything then the cost of storing the logs is going to increase. Now what Loki does is Loki doesn't really index everything. It doesn't really index all the logs line by line. So what it does is it indexes only metadata and then all of the remaining line of logs are just compressed and then kept in cheaper storage like S3 or you can use any other object storage as well. So that really brings down storage costs a lot. Now scalability issues get solved because we have various components which we can horizontally scale. So you can literally run Loki on 5 servers or 50 servers and you can grow as and when need arrives. So that's the benefit of horizontally scaling. Now typically in an open source world you will see people using Grafana and Prometheus a lot. Now there are quite a lot of log aggregation tool which has lack of integration with Prometheus. Now what Loki does is Loki follows the kind of same structure, follows the kind of same querying mechanism to query logs. So it makes it quite easier for people who are coming from the same background, let's say who have used Grafana and Prometheus. Now to them using Loki is going to be quite easy. Now the other problem which was there in other log aggregation tool was really, you know, how you read the data or how you analyze the data. Now querying the data, you have to learn some specific language. And for example, let's say if you are coming from Prometheus background, in that case, if you are storing your logs in Splunk, then you have to learn SPL, which is Splunk processing language. Now, in this case, since the syntax and structure is quite similar to Prometheus, it's going to be quite easy to just query logs and do the analysis. Now, of course, Loki also offers log QL, which is log query language. And using that is quite simple. When we are coming to log querying part, I'm going to show you how, it is, how easy it is to start analyzing and start creating the beautiful dashboards. Now, there is another problem which Loki has solved, is, which is related to heterogeneous log sources. Now, you will see modern systems are really sending logs in various formats, for example, you will see now logs being sent in JSON format or maybe in the flat file format or maybe in the CSV format. Okay, so what Loki does is Loki can aggregate logs coming from different formats and you can just label them and then you can start querying them. Okay, so that's how easy it is. And now the other benefit of using Loki is that it's quite easy to correlate logs. You can simply use Loki's label based approach to efficiently filter and correlate logs based on specific criteria, which is going to enable faster troubleshooting and root cause analysis. So these are some of the problems which is addressed by Loki. Now before we move on to talk about Loki, let's try to understand what are logs. So now here you can see typically our application logs will have this kind of structure. For example, here you can see we are going to have some kind of date and timestamp. Then we are going to have kind of log label. For example, here you can see we have info, error, info, warn, you might see debug, you might see critical as well. And then you are going to see some sort of label, for example, which application the log is coming from or which instance the log is coming from or you might also see which server the log is coming from and then you are going to see the actual log lines and you can see something similar for system logs now here also we have some information of date timestamp log level and then we have information about the server where the log is coming from and then we have some information about the actual log lines and similarly for access logs where let's say people are accessing the application we have of course date time we have some similar information as well and then we have some more information for example the type of request which is made to the application whether it is a get request whether it is a post request and whether it is any other type of request and what is the page which user is trying to access for example here you can see there is a post request for api login page and our server responded with 200 status which which means this request was successful and then you have certain other information for example how much time is taken by this request what was the user agent information you have some headers information and then we have response body and so on okay so you can see all of these logs are quite different but they have something in common which we are going to understand now. Now what I have done is I have just actually combined some of the important fields from the logs. So for example now here in these logs you can see we have a application name which is called my app and then we have instance which is called instance one and then we have a column which we can call level and level is basically giving us various levels of information and after that we have simply timestamp and followed by the actual log lines. And similarly for system logs, we have system related information and then we have date and time and the actual log lines. And for access logs, we have again access logs related information, which we can use to group these logs. And then we have the actual log lines. So in Loki terms, 
what happens is all of these are called labels for example here also in system logs you can call it label now here we have three labels for example we have a label which is called app then we have another label which is called instance then we have another label which is called level now all of these labels are going to get indexed and all the other information are not going to get indexed now similarly for access log all the information which you see which is part of label are going to get indexed and then all the other information are not going to get indexed now the benefit of this is typically you are going to always query on labels for example you are going to see how many for example when there are issues in application you are going to typically start the query by giving the name of the application because because from the matrix you are already going to have name of the application which is giving you the problem then you might also have instance information for example you might be knowing that the problem is coming when the request is being sent to instance 1 or instance 2 and then you might already be knowing you might also want to know the level for example you are going to be interested only in warning or error information logs so in that case you are going to query only on these information of course we can go ahead and query on these information or these log lines as well for example other than specifying these label related filters or label related criteria i may want to specify give me all the log lines where the word contains is logged and in that case i'm going to get only this item now we are going to see this more when we are talking about querying logs but i hope you you got a uh, quite a fair bit of idea how Loki really stores logs. Now let's have a quick look of Loki architecture since you have now understood logs. Now there are quite a few things which we need to see here. For example, there is a separate write path which is used when we are writing logs to Loki, and there is a separate read path which is used when we are querying Loki. Now when a component or an agent is sending logs to Loki, it is going to first connect to distributor which is then going to send the request to ingester. Now you can have multiple distributor. For example, you can have two distributors, which is going to receive all the request. And then you can have, for example, let's say five ingester. So distributor is going to send the request to one of the available ingester to ingest the logs. And then when you are reading logs, again, all the request for reading the logs is going to come to query front end. And then from query front end, the request is going to go to querier. And then querier is actually going to perform the query processing and going to give the result back to query front end. And then it's going to be shown in Grafana. Now there are few other services which we are going to see again later on. At this moment, we don't really need to go in a lot of detail. All you need to understand is that there are going to be separate write path and there is going to be separate read path and then all our logs are going to be stored in object storage and then all the logs have index and chunks now index is combination of labels as i shown you previously and then chunks are simply all the log lines now there is one important thing which you need to know at this point of time is that there is a component which is called index shipper which i have mentioned here in point number three and that index shipper is used for the purpose of sending the logs to object storage and if you are working on prior to 2.0 Loki version in that case Loki had different storage backends for indexes and chunks but now there is only single storage backend which you can use for index and chunks for example for example in this case we can just go ahead and use AWS S3 for storing index and chunks and Grafana Loki is going to go and manage everything internally we don't really need to be aware of how the logs are being indexed and stored so at this point of time that's all we need to know in order to start working on Loki so that's all all I had for this lesson and I'm gonna see you again in the next lesson.